and thank you for joining us today for our uh, virtual COVID-19 Mental Health Summit in collaboration with uh, local mental health professionals, as well as the city of, of Rio Grande City. And today, the intent or focus we're going to have today is um, to manage and cope with feelings of fear, anxiety, sadness, stress. And we have um, several presenters that are going to bring to us information, strategies, techniques, and tools and resources that people at home can utilize while we're dealing with this pandemic. Never before our generation has been in a position like we have, um, like we're in right now with this pandemic. It has been difficult. It's been challenging for all of us to uh, manage this new normal. However, there are strategies and techniques and uh, ways to manage our stress, our anxiety, our fear. Now know that today's presentation will be done in English and in Spanish. Our first presenter will do her presentation in English. Our second will do Spanish. Our third presenter will do uh, will be a bilingual presentation. So all in all, we will be um, having this conversation. Now we once we conclude the presentation, we'll have an opportunity for live question and answer, as well as the public. If you wish to ask any of the presenters questions, please feel free to ask those questions. Keep in mind that today is about uh, sharing um, information, of having the conversation about managing this uh, difficult moment in our lives. Muchísimas gracias por acompañarnos este día. Lo que, lo que vamos a hacer hoy es traerles información, tener una plática. Tenemos uh, diferentes panelistas, este, todos son especialistas or, en el bienestar mental. Y ahí, por favor, me, me perdonan el español, a veces no lo practico suficientemente. Pero muchísimas gracias por acompañarnos. Y lo que vamos a hacer es vamos a proveer la información, estrategias, técnicas, recursos um, para ayudarles a manejar esta situación que obviamente es dificultosa. Esta pandemia que nos ha traído diferentes uh, situaciones que nos ha afectado al nivel global, o al, should I say, al nivel mundial. So, muchísimas gracias por acompañarnos. Esperemos que toda esta información les traiga beneficio. And all, again, going back to all this information that we will be providing today is for the sole purpose of helping people cope with this difficult situation of, of the new normal, being at home, this shelter in place, and many of these situations, how to reframe it, how to, the tools, managing, managing this situation. So with that being said, thank you so much to our presenters. Again, it's a collaborative effort between mental health professionals and the city of Rio Grande City. And once we conclude, please feel free to ask any questions as we go through, through the presentation. With us today, I have the pleasure of having Mr. Alex Sarabia. <laughs> Mr. Sarabia. Good afternoon. Good afternoon and thank you for the invites and, and for organizing this very important event because oftentimes mental health is not really taken into account and it should. So thank you for organizing the event and inviting us to speak about this important topic during this time. Thank you, Mr. Taravia. We also have Dr. Alaniz. Eh, buenas tardes. Como uh, yo voy a hablar en español, pues me voy a introducir en español. Uh, soy Matilde Aranís. Este, uh, gracias también por la invitación y esperemos que les podamos dar aliento y algo de paz en este tiempo que estamos pasando y que podamos recomendar de la mejor manera para que ustedes este, estén en paz en lo que nos queda de estar en la casa y de pues adelante. 
que gracias a Dios tenemos vida y para adelante vamos. Gracias. Muchísimas gracias, doctora Lanis. And our first presenter today, we have with us Ms. Elma Cumpiat. Hi, everybody. Um, buenas tardes a todos. Um, I will be presenting this afternoon, and it's a pleasure to be here. I want to say thank you very much. Um, like Ms. Uh, Dr. Alanis mentioned, más que nada, we want to bring you, help bring you a sense of peace, help bring some calmness to this chaos that we're living and to be able to provide you strategies and techniques that possibly could be of service uh, versus our um, chaotic schedules that we're now living. I'm Elma Compian, and uh, I am a licensed professional counselor. It's a pleasure to be amongst this group. Thank you. Do you want me to go ahead and begin? Okay. Good to have you, Ms. Compian, and you have the floor. Thank you. So I will be sharing some information today regarding um, what probably is the overwhelming theme of our, of our lives now. We are probably all feeling a tremendous amount of stress. I do want you to, to note that I said we, because life is so different for all of us. Life, I think um, there may be few people who are living life exactly the way they were living before. But um, for most of us, life has changed tremendously. And uh, when we look and we reflect upon our citizens, we're looking at how life has changed for those of us in um, the mental health field, in education, in the medical field, for families altogether and across the lifespan. We look at children's lives have changed as have working adults and the um, older generations. So I'll be providing some information regarding ways that we can cope with the stresses that we're now living. As I said, our schedules have tremendously changed. So we're seeing first and foremost, most of us are now working from home. Most of us have changed um, our routines to now work from home and incorporate more electronics. Uh, children, children's lives have changed dramatically as well in the way that they're, no, they're now practicing distance learning. So many children are feeling the stresses that working digitally may bring. Um, Nowadays, you know, we've, we're finding ourselves with a little more difficulty. And I know that Mayor Avial mentioned earlier, we now have to plan our, if we're going to the grocery store or whatever tasks and responsibilities we need to carry out, they need to be more planned out, which brings about some stress, some anxiety possibly, and other feelings that come right along with that. I want, First of all, I want to let you know that when we are stressed, there are other feelings and emotions that come along with that. Low tolerance, we become easily annoyed, we can become frustrated, get to the point of possibly even anger, our behaviors change. And so we as adults need to be uh, more cognizant of our own behaviors so that our behaviors don't trickle down and change the behaviors of our children. It is important that we take care of ourselves. Most many of us have the responsibility of caring for others as well, whether we care for children. Uh, some of us may be caring for our elderly parents. Uh, some may take charge of neighbors and, think, and people, uh, other loved ones. So first and foremost, when we are feeling stressed, the first thing that is important is that we recognize, that we recognize the beginning signs of our own stress. How is our, how is our day changing and how, is our, how are our behaviors changing? Our moods, our emotions, how are those changing? And hopefully we'll be able to take note of those 
early enough before those behaviors change enough to impact someone else's life or impact our day negatively. And so some important things to keep in mind uh, in order to take care of our own selves. First and foremost, um, taking care of ourselves and our bodies, our physical self. It's important that we um, eat healthy meals, that we get plenty of sleep, that we prioritize our day to take care of those most important things and the needs of our family, ourselves and our family, and then take care of everything else in the order that they may fall. We can do this by um, when we recognize that stress is beginning to be a problem, we can take deep breaths, practice some deep breathing, we can do some stretches, um, exercise is always a good option. And of course, meditating or um, engaging in prayer. If this is something that brings solace and peace to you, this is very, very, very useful. Um, also, of course, avoiding the use of alcohol and other drugs that can only um, make things get a little more, um, impact things more negatively. So. Uh, that's taking care of our physical self. Um, it's also important to recognize that anytime we turn on the new, anytime we turn on the TV or we get on uh, any social media, chances are the conversation revolves around pandemic. Uh, we're finding that we're getting all kinds of information from how it's spread to wiping down our food to all the objects and things and so sometimes that can become overwhelming so it may be necessary that we recognize okay how much information am i able to process and when is it becoming excessive when is it impacting my mood and when is it impacting and and creating an anxiety so once we recognize that it may be time for us to take a little break we want to remain informed but we don't want it to become excessive to the point that it causes us anxiety stress frustration with those around us um remember that as much as we want to we want all the information that we possibly can get but we need to recognize that hearing about the pandemic repeatedly may have a negative impact on us so when we start to recognize that we must take a step back and take a break from that. Um, it's important that we connect with others. And when I say connect with others, talk to people that we, of course, we need to share how we're feeling. And so it's important that we share our feelings with people that we trust and people that are going to um, support, support us in a positive way. So, um, talking to people about how we're feeling to those loved ones to your neighbors to trusted social and social groups things like that um those are all very very important uh steps that we should take of course as adults it's also important that we engage in activities that um, bring us that interest us and that bring us pleasure and that help us to relax to be calm that are all po with a positive and healthy nature. Um, I also want to focus on how in, on our children's behavior. With schools closing, children's schedules have become just something else. And as far as children's schedules becoming uh, quite different from what they normally would experience on uh, at this time of the year, children now. Um, utilizing electronic devices to engage in distance learning. Um, they have educators probably calling and checking on how they're doing using different platforms such as Class Dojo. Um, and at times this can become overwhelming, not just uh, for the child, but for the parents who may have several children, for their parents who have several children and they're trying to help their child 
or help each one of their children get to their work. It's important that we recognize that when children become stressed, their behaviors change. And children do not express anxiety or stress uh, like adults do. It's important that caregivers um, keep careful tabs on children's behavior and recognize when children's behavior starts to change, what are some things that we can do? So first and foremost, it's important in uh, addressing our children's needs. Um, it's important that we recognize, okay, what are the behaviors that my child is demonstrating? Um, is he showing fear? Is he showing frustration? Is Does he appear angry? So at times like this, it's important, especially with pandemic, children may have a lot of questions. They may be the, the, the same kind of need for information that we have, they may have to a different level. It's important that we remind children that first and foremost, reassure them that they're not alone that as their caregivers, as their parents, we are there. We are here to walk right by them, to care for them and to keep them safe. Let children know that we're prepared as adult caregivers to, to be with you. You're cared for, you're loved and you're supported. Children need to know that and children need to hear that from us, whether it's through a hug, through our verbal words, but children need to know um, that they are cared for, that they're in a safe environment, and that we're providing the nurturing that they require. It's also important that we share with kids our safety plan. We need to let kids know, okay, um, we, we need to let kids know that we have a plan in place to um, obtain the food, shelter, and other necessities. We need to let kids know in terms that they can understand that they're safe and that by practicing the hand washing, um, the wearing of personal protective equipment, such as face masks, we will all be in a much safer environment. Um, also, children are responding, I'm sure, uh, very differently because the stay at home uh, ordinances. And so children may be questioning, well, why can't we go to the park or why, you know, but we can, as, as adult caregivers and parents, it's important that we create an environment for children where when these things come about, we'll be able to provide like maybe engage in activities with them where we go outdoors if you have the ability to spend some time outside, especially on a beautiful day like today, the sun is shining, um, spend some time outdoors, maybe pack a, uh, some sandwiches, take them outside and have a little picnic or go outside and find, you know, look, look for some pretty rocks and see what you can do with those, if you can shine them up uh, so that kids know that it's their, um, their safety, their security, and that you're engaged with them, that as parents, we're engaged. When we talk about safety plans, let children know that that they have, that we as parents have the means to obtain what we need for them. We need to speak with them, speak to them in a calm, neutral tone. And I recommend that we use a calm, neutral tone throughout our day. Children will pick up on our emotions based on our tone, our cadence, and the volume of our voice. So many times if uh, we raise our voice, children will understand, oh, mom's getting a little upset, or mom is not very happy at this moment. So just by the tone of our voice. So speaking in a calm, neutral tone as much as possible is very, very important. This helps create a caring attitude and fosters cooperation and peace in the home. Explain to kids what's happening. Let them know um, we are home, we're together, we're safe. Using those three uh, phrases, we are home, we're together, and we're safe, will bring a sense of reassurance to our children. 
So um, I want to talk a little bit about children's behavior. According to the Centers for Disease Control on Mental Health, we're able to see that children's behaviors change according to their ages. So as parents, we may start noticing some changes in their behavior. Children under the ages of uh, two and under may appear more cranky, they may cry more, they may require more physical attention from parents and caregivers. And so the way to respond to this is to provide them what they're needing at this time. Sometimes we think, oh, I'm gonna spoil them by carrying them, but this is their way of expressing their distress or their, their needs right now. Children between the ages of three to six years old, we may be seeing um, that they'll regress as far as behaviors that they had previously mastered. They might have outgrown bedwetting. They might already be sleeping in their own rooms or in their own beds. And we're finding that now they might be coming to parents' rooms and crawling into bed or expressing a fear of the dark. This is all very normal during a crisis like what we're experiencing. Um, even, even tantruming behaviors may be normal between children's ages, three to six years old or so. Um, and this is in response to their um, confusion, their sense of confusion as far as what may be happening and their response. Children between the ages of seven to 10 years old may be more able to express sadness, anger, frustration, um, or fear. Um, it's important with children between in this age group to let them know as well what is happening and to clarify any rumors that they may be hearing. Children in this age group might already be engaging in some kind of social media, whether they um, use TikTok or any other form, but they're getting bits and pieces of information from different sources. So some of these sources may even include news coverage, or adult conversations that take place in the home. So it's important that we be careful with the conversations that we hold at home in the presence of our children. Sometimes children are so um, are even listening in on conversations when we don't see them uh, in, present in the room. So as parents and caretakers, be very careful. I, I suggest that um, we keep those conversations to a minimum uh, especially how we hand, how we're handling our own our own fears, our own un sense of uncertainty. Uh, this day and age, we're getting source information from all sources, and sometimes, unbeknownst to us, we'll make a comment or express how 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 we got to be more more careful or more cautious, or I have to plan, or do I have gloves, or I need to get a mask, and all of those little comments may have may impact children. When it comes to teens and preteens, um, we may have uh, teens and preteens acting more rebellious, not wanting to um, follow in parents' directives. They may engage in reckless behaviors, and they may express this as, "Ah, oh, it's so boring. It's so boring," and they may engage in certain activities that are um, not quite to their benefit. So it's important as parents that we hold conversations with them. If we can um, have a little heart to heart with our children and, and remind them, we love you, we're here for you, and we're together and we're safe. Also, I found some information uh, regarding children with special needs. It's important that we understand that Children with special needs um, include children who have uh, physical disabilities, emotional disabilities, and uh, some of these disabilities, some children may rely on specific equipment for day-to-day -day functioning. So uh, it's interesting to note that even children who require uh, who have special needs and require use of, let's say, oxygen or they're um, confined to a bed, they show distress 
to a heightened level in a situation like this. And they may require um, more reassurance, especially because they have less control over their day-to-day -day activities and they rely on the care of others. So um, hold your children near and dear to you. This is a time that we come together as families, engage in activities. Like I said, spend time outdoors whenever possible as a family. Uh, enjoy preparing meals together. Help kids maybe paint, draw, color, uh, play a board game, a card game. Um, sometimes we may even en enlist our children's help in activities that we need to get done around the house. And we might want to do that in, in a more fun way. We might want to, one, one thing that we might want to do is even say, okay, let's help me rearrange, uh, let's rearrange the furniture. And that will bring a little, um, a little difference to their day and, and just spark things up for them as well. Make, make things a little different, lighten up things for them. Um, it's important that we, we do things together and that we recognize that we're, that we need to connect even more with our children and with each other. Um, I know that we're practicing the social distancing as much as possible, but there are so many ways to connect. Even those of us who don't use social media can connect using our phones. We can um, make a phone call to family members. We can get our kids on there and talk to uh, an older aunt or a grandmother, grandparent. Um, those are all important things and important ways that we stay connected and help children who are feeling stressed. Um, know that um, we need to stay informed without excess, engage in physical activity, use some exercise, play games with our kids. Um, even at whatever age, even if we have teenagers, kind of like tug on them and go out there and uh, spend some time with them. Uh, once we start to notice that children are withdrawing, that their behaviors are changing, kind of like it's important that we go in and that we have a talk with them, that we let them know all of our lives have changed, but we still remain together. And we're practicing social distancing, so that today we may not be able to be together physically with others, with friends and coworkers, um, other family members, but we do this now so that we can be together soon. Make sure that we answer any questions that our children have. Uh, when we answer their questions, speak in a calm, neutral tone. As much as they may ask the same question over and over again, Let's try to keep our emotions in check so that we don't let them know the frustration level that we may be feeling and answer their questions in age appropriate words, using words that they can understand and keeping things simple. Um, again, stressing that, they're, that we are safe and that if necessary, we do have means to get help. Um, I want to encourage everyone to seek help if you feel that you're feeling that your stress is um, heightening and becoming, uh, it's important that we can turn to our clergy, counseling, or medical professionals as needed. Um, also of the utmost importance is that as parents and caregivers, that we set a good example, not only for our children, but for those around us. Set a good example when it comes to whether it's personal hygiene, um, preventing the spread of COVID-19, being kind to one another, practicing um, kindness and a, a peaceful environment and a peaceful attitude. Um, thank you. Uh, that's what I have for now, and we'll entertain some questions afterwards. Thank you very much, Ms. Coleman. Certainly appreciate that. Next with us, we have Dr. Matilde Alaniz. 
have the floor, Dr. Alanis. Okay. I cannot hear you, Dr. Alanis. She's muted. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Decía que ya escuchemos a Miss Elma dándonos unas recomendaciones para los niños. Este, y yo quisiera hablar un poco de lo que está pasando también más como adultos y unos niños un poco más grandes. Este, en esta situación que estamos pasando, ah, vemos que el mundo cambia, todos en realidad, porque esto es mundial, como decía Mr. Joel, esto ha pasado en todas partes. Entonces, ¿qué hacer con algo así? ¿Qué es lo que pasa? ¿Cómo pensamos? ¿Cómo nos movemos en esta situación? Entonces, algunas cosas de lo que está pasando es porque sentimos que no tenemos control en la situación. Y en realidad eso es. Pero, ¿qué podemos hacer en estos momentos? Cuando esto pasa, hay frustración de nuestra parte, hay tristeza, hay estrés, um, hay, se siente soledad, hay negatividad, hay miedos. Entonces, ¿qué hacer con todo esto que nos está pasando? Bueno, si yo, por ejemplo, yo me siento ansiosa por lo que está pasando, o sea, ¿qué es lo que yo puedo hacer para yo sentirme mejor? Si yo, yo sé que no tengo control, ¿qué hago? Es como algo que yo enseño y les platico a, a las personas que yo veo, que consulto. Les digo, nosotros tenemos, imagínense esto, y les enseño una gráfica de el centro somos nosotros y lo de afuera es todo, todas las demás personas. Mi centro es cosas que yo puedo controlar, cosas que yo puedo hablar, cosas que yo puedo cambiar sobre mí. Pero lo de alrededor, yo no puedo cambiar ni lo que está pasando, ni a mi vecino, ni a mi hijo, ni a nadie. ¿Puedo yo cambiarme a mí mismo? Es como, eh, eh, hay una frase muy famosa donde habla de que sé el cambio que tú quieres ser. ¿Por qué digo esto? Porque muchas veces nos frustramos. Yo estoy en, tengo varias redes sociales y tengo amigos en, en chats y cosas y, y todos haciendo memes y cosas y hablando de lo que nos está pasando. Y muchas veces vemos la tensión y la frustración y muchas veces vemos que nos reímos. Entonces, ¿qué es lo que está pasando con nosotros? Por ejemplo, si hay frustración en nuestra vida ahorita, porque yo nada más me puedo cambiar a mí, entonces vamos a ver desde el punto de vista de qué puedo hacer para mí mismo porque en realidad nosotros tenemos la solución. ¿Por qué? Nada más imagínense, cuando nos cortamos, nosotros sanamos. Si nosotros cuidamos esa herida, nosotros vamos a sanar. Es lo mismo con nuestra mente. Si le ponemos cosas positivas, podemos estar bien. Pero muchas veces nos enfocamos en la ne negatividad. Entonces, yo les quiero decir, varios tocar varios puntos. Por ejemplo, cuando yo estoy frustrada, ¿qué hago? Yo no puedo cambiar la situación. ¿Qué voy a hacer? Bueno, decir, ¿sabes qué? Perdón, ¿sabes qué? Me voy a hacer algo para mí. Voy a hacer algo para yo seguir adelante. Yo sé que no puedo trabajar y yo estoy en la misma situación que ustedes. Yo no voy al trabajo casi. Como yo trabajo en una escuela, tengo que ir en veces. Yo veo uh, clientes por telehealth, por telesalud. Entonces, yo no puedo salir, pero yo voy a figurar qué puedo hacer. Tengo una mente que me ayuda a seguir adelante. Yo tengo que hacer eso. ¿Cómo lo hago? ¿Poniendo cosas negativas y frustrándome y no puedo? No. ¿Sabes qué? ¿Qué puedo hacer? ¿Qué voy a hacer? Entonces, me pongo a leer, me pongo a investigar cosas que me llenen. No estoy hablando de las noticias que me están enseñando lo que está pasando en el mundo. Ya sé que hay problemas. ¿Qué puedo hacer? Pensar cómo puedo yo estar estable. Uh, si hay hábitos inusuales o hábitos que me lastiman, ¿qué es lo que yo puedo hacer? Decirme a mí mismo, quiero tranquilizarme, quiero mejorar, ¿qué quiero hacer? Reflexionar en lo que puedo hacer para yo ayudarme a mí misma. Porque yo no voy a cambiar la situación, pero yo me puedo cambiar a mí. So, yo me puedo estar frustrando por todo lo que pasa, pero... O puedo decir, ¿sabes qué? Este tiempo voy a estudiar, este tiempo voy a hacer lo otro. También me voy a poner en el lugar donde las personas no tienen trabajo, no pueden estar trabajando. Yo creo entender esa situación, pero en realidad, ¿qué podemos hacer? 
mientras tengamos vida y salud, podemos seguir adelante. No sabemos por qué está esto, pero bueno, es, es una situación que tenemos que salir adelante. Si empezamos a decir, no, es que pues ni modo, yo ya no voy a seguir adelante, ya se acabó, entonces yo misma me estoy poniendo una actitud muy negativa y yo necesito salir adelante. Yo tengo familia, yo tengo hijos, tengo quiero trabajar. Pensar en lo que viene para futuro. Mientras tengamos vida y salud, hay cosas que pueden seguir adelante. Esa es frustración, ansiedad. Si yo estoy ansiosa por lo que está pasando, es que a lo mejor estoy oyendo mucho el radio, mucho las noticias, entonces yo misma me estoy poniendo eso. Nosotros somos lo que entra a nosotros. Si han oído cuando dicen, somos lo que comemos, bueno, somos lo que escuchamos, somos todo eso también. Tenemos que poner cosas buenas para que salgan cosas buenas. Entonces, <coughs> reducir esas redes sociales, probablemente ver un programa que sea educativo para nosotros. Y voy a hablar de educación porque es lo que hago, enseño. Entonces, entonces <coughs> también poner atención. Mindfulness es, es un estado completo de tranquilidad. Ver lo que está pasando a mi alrededor. Puedo respirar. Hay, hay actividades, de, actividades perdón, de relajación. De respirar cuatro segundos, dos segundos y seis. Respirar. Inhalar. Dejarlo ahí y sacarlo. Yo le enseño a los niños, les digo, <coughs> estás um, oliendo el pastel y le estás apagando las velas. Cuatro repeticiones, tranquilidad. Como ahorita nosotros andábamos este, tratando de, de juntarnos para hacer esta actividad y, y si nos ponemos un poco nerviosos porque no estamos impuestos todo el tiempo a hacer esto. Y decimos, ok, déjame respirar. O sea, son cosas que vamos a hacer para esperemos que ustedes este, estén tomando algo de esto. Tenemos que practicar lo que decimos. Este, también a uh, poner atención a cosas, como decía, positivas. Mindfulness, cuando está silencio. ¿Qué estoy oyendo? ¿Dónde estoy? ¿Cómo se ve mi cuarto? ¿Qué música oigo? Tranquilizarnos, porque nosotros sabemos que estamos en un mundo donde pronto, rápido, que sigue, fast food, no está lista. Pero si nosotros decimos, Tranquilos. Ahorita estamos un poco tranquilos en esa forma, que no andamos para arriba y para abajo. Bueno, no debemos. Estamos más en un lugar. Entonces, eso nos da la oportunidad de ver una, poner una atención absoluta a lo que está pasando en nosotros, no en la, no en la, en la ciudad, no en el, en el estado ni, ni el mundo, en nosotros mismos. ¿Cómo, cómo puedo yo alentarme a mí misma? ¿Qué puedo hacer? Voy a lo mismo, leer, cosas que me hacen uh, sentir bien, estar con mi familia. Hey, ¿Cómo estás? Platicar, claro, por teléfono, o FaceTime, o WhatsApp Time, o cosas de esas. ¿Qué tal si viene la tristeza a mi vida? Pensar, bueno, es que yo no pedí esto, yo no esperaba esto. Es importante pensar en la espiritualidad. Uh, cualquier tipo de espiritualidad que usted piense que le ayuda a usted. Y hay algo muy común que se llama el serenity prayer, um, la oración de la serenidad. Tener serenidad, tener valor y sabiduría. Serenidad es tranquilidad. Valor, tener esa fuerza para cam uh, cambiar lo que sí puedo, pero serenidad para lo que no puedo, como decía anteriormente, lo que podemos controlar y no. Y también para tener la sabiduría, ¿qué es lo que voy a hacer? Cualquier tipo de espiritualidad que usted practique, que le pueda ayudar, que pueda leer, que pueda, no sé, rezar, orar, lo que usted sienta para quitar esa tristeza. Recuerden, lo que ponemos va a salir. Si yo digo, ah, yo, yo, soy, yo estoy triste, siempre estoy triste, pero ¿qué tal si dices, bueno, déjame buscar una idea, déjame hacer algo? Claro, esto no va a reemplazar algún problema mental que usted tenga que, te, tenga que tomar medicamento. Eso es diferente. Es diferente totalmente. Este, entonces, una de las cosas que yo he encontrado que me ha ayudado es, uh, hablo por WhatsApp y nos reímos con mis compañeras, amigas y cosas. Y, y pones tu mente en otra parte. O sea, no las puedo ver aquí en mi casa, pero las puedo ver por teléfono. Y eso me ayuda. El estrés, bueno, es algo que decimos que siempre lo tenemos, pero podemos hacer cambios en eso. ¿Qué puedo hacer? Es como, ¿verdad? Nos podemos llenar como quiera de muchas cosas, 
o decir, ¿sabes qué? Despacio, inhalar, respirar, traer relajación. Um, cuando, cuando yo estoy viendo mi social media y me estoy a sí misma este, haciendo pensar en cosas negativas, eso me estresa. Y yo he tenido grupos donde dicen, oye, no compartas eso, me estresa más. Ok, o así, ¿verdad? Y, y uh, son, seamos y jugamos con eso, pero decimos, o sea, la realidad de las cosas es, ¿qué puedo hacer yo? Ver cosas positivas. El estrés es algo que nosotros llamamos a, nuestro, a nosotros mismos si estamos sobre lo mismo, lo mismo, lo mismo. También puedo a lo mejor hacer ejercicio o puedo tener una rutina de dieta. Yo, por ejemplo, en la mañana me levanto, no muy temprano, digo, ok, voy a hacer ejercicio, ok, voy a leer, yo leo la Biblia, ok, voy a, ya, es hora de hacer de comer, ok, tengo que ponerme a trabajar, ok, tengo clientes. Entonces, yo trato de tener una rutina, también lo hice con mis hijas, les dije, esta es su rutina. Ay, mamá, esta es la rutina, es lo que ustedes van a hacer. Entonces, es importante tener algo así para saber qué esperamos, porque si ahorita estuviéramos trabajando en la escuela, los niños tienen rutina y nosotros también. Si somos amas de casa, hay una rutina también. Entonces, hay que seguir ese patrón a lo más uh, cercano que podamos. Si hay soledad en nuestra vida, lo mismo. O sea, este, sabemos que, que tenemos que pues, estar distanciados físicamente, pero no espiritualmente o no eh, con conectarnos en las cámaras o en teléfonos como ahorita que lo estamos haciendo, que todos estamos en diferente parte, no estamos juntos. Um, comunicarnos con alguien que tenemos mucho de, de no platicar, uh, mandar un, un saludo, ¿cómo estás? ¿Verdad? Y entonces, arreglarnos, uh, darnos esa oportunidad de decir, ¿sabes qué? Pues voy a aprender esto para hacerme. Me voy a el pelo la cara, los hombres, diferente, pero cosas así. Cuando yo soy muy negativa, ¿cómo me ayuda eso? Yo tengo que pensar, ¿qué me ayuda a ser yo tan negativa? Pues nada, ¿qué puedo hacer? Entonces, uh, lo que yo tengo que hacer es resistir esos pensamientos, ¿cómo? Poner cosas positivas en mí. ¿Y de dónde saco eso? De donde yo pueda. Ahorita hay muchas cosas donde yo pueda leer, ver, escuchar. Esa es una es algo que yo voy a decidir que voy a hacer. Escribir, escribir cosas que me pueden ayudar a mí. Y reflexionar. Miedo. Bueno, sabemos que esto es desconocido, que no sabemos qué está pasando, pero yo no puedo vivir con miedo todo el tiempo. ¿Qué puedo hacer? Ya me dijeron, quédate en tu casa, lávate las manos, no te toques la cara, no salgas donde hay lugares concurridos. Yo puedo hacer eso. Estar en mi casa. Entonces, miedo, miedo. ¿Miedo a qué? Si yo practico espiritualidad, si yo tra uh, practico tranquilidad, respiración, puedo estar tranquila. Si nosotros, algunos de nosotros, trabajamos en teletrabajo, telesalud, tele, lo que hagamos, eh, Zoom, Gomit, ¿cómo le puedo hacer? Bueno, estar listo, tener mi espacio de trabajo, tener mis cosas donde deben de estar. Otra vez, establecer una rutina para hacer eso. Es lo que nos va a ayudar. Uh, yo, como les digo, yo trabajo en esto, entonces yo a cierta hora digo, me tengo que conectar, me tengo que sentar aquí, aquí está mi espacio de trabajo y tengo que tener mis cosas arregladas. Se acaba mi tiempo, me salgo un ratito para el patio de afuera de mi casa, me relajo y luego, si tengo otra cosa que hacer, lo hago. Esas son unas recomendaciones que yo puede, creo que le pueden ayudar, este, pero ahorita vemos alguna pregunta que ustedes tengan y esperamos contestarlas de la mejor manera. Gracias. Muchísimas gracias, Dr. Alanis. Thank you so much for, for that presentation. Next with us, we have Mr. Alex Sarabia. You have the floor. Thank you, Mayor Villarreal. Uh, I'm Alex Arabia, psychology professor at STC and also licensed professional counselor. I've been a professor mm -hmm. for like nine years and for three years I practiced uh, therapy at Doctors Hospital at Renaissance, the behavioral center. And today I'll be talking about some of the symptoms of depression and anxiety, although my friends and colleagues already kind of touched base uh, a little on that. And I'll also be talking about some uh, strategies you can do 
to overcome that and local resources, which are very important uh, to take advantage of. <laughs> so, um, mi nombre es Alex Arabia, because I'm also going to do it bilingual, English and Spanish, y voy a hablar en inglés y en español. Soy un profesor de psicología en South Texas College y también un consejero uh, profesional. Y ahora voy a hablar de los síntomas de la depresión, de la ansiedad, uh, cosas que pueden hacer desde casa para sentirse mejor o estresados y también uh, recursos aquí locales que pueden ayudarles, uh, ayuda profesional para sobresalir, salir adelante de esto. So uh, a, a pandemic is something that none of us expected that we're going to go through this and, and live this. It has been a big change in all of our lives, as my colleagues have mentioned. Um, for example, as a professor now, all of my classes are online. So we had to convert the classes to online and the students also had to adjust to doing all their work from home and, and not in the classroom. So uh, it's a big change and with change, there can come uh, mood swings, depression, stress and anxiety. And, and that's why uh, it's important to, to host uh, summits like this one to uh, inform the public about what they can do if they're experiencing this. Una pandemia es algo que nadie nos imaginamos vivir, un gran cambio en nuestras vidas. Por ejemplo, como profesor, ahora todas las clases las doy por internet y los estudiantes tuvieron que ajustarse y hacer todo el trabajo desde casa también. Y así todos, la mayoría de la gente está trabajando desde casa o quizás no tiene trabajo. Y todo eso puede causar ansiedad, depresión, estrés, y ahora vamos a hablar de qué pueden hacer para sentirse mejor. So, first of all, some of the symptoms of depression include for at least two weeks, you need to have changes in your mood. For example, uh, guilt or hopelessness, uh, loss of interest or, or pleasure in activities that you once enjoyed, uh, mood swings and also sadness. There can also be behavioral changes, excessive crying, irritability, uh, social isolation, changes in sleep and in appetite. Some people uh, sleep more than normal and others lose their sleep. They experience insomnia. It can go either way. And the same thing with uh, eating. Some people overeat and others lose their appetite whenever they're depressed. Some cognitive changes include uh, lack of concentration, uh, slowness in activity, or thoughts of suicide, thoughts of taking away your life. Um, and whole body experiences can include uh, fatigue, not wanting to get up and, and do anything. You're pretty much uh, not in the mood to do anything. So those are some of the symptoms of depression because anybody can be sad a day or two, but if you have these uh, symptoms consistently for at least two weeks, you might meet uh, the criteria to be diagnosed with depression. And of course, a professional is the one that has to give you that diagnosis, a psychologist and LPC, uh, and so on. So, algunos de los síntomas de la depresión incluyen por dos semanas, no nomás unas cuantas horas o días, pero dos semanas de tener cambios en, en su uh, comportamiento, quizás lloran bastante, se enojan, están aislados, también en, en su sentido de, de ánimo, quizás se sienten con culpa, sin esperanza, sin interés en actividades que en algún tiempo les gustaba hacer, tristeza, también cambios en apetito y en dormir, unos duermen más y unos menos, unos se les da insomnia con la depresión y Con el apetito, unos comen más y otros pierden el apetito. Uh, fatiga, cansancio y, y ganas de no hacer nada. También uh, cognitamente, uh, de tu mente, a lo mejor problemas en concentración o pensamientos suicidas, de quererte quitar la vida. So, si esos síntomas están presentes consistentemente por dos semanas, uh, probablemente la persona tenga depresión y un profesional es el que hace el diagnóstico a counselor or a psychologist. So uh, those are the symptoms for depression. Now, if you go with a professional, they can provide cognitive behavioral therapy. They change 
uh, the way you think and act by giving you strategies because our mind is very powerful. Uh, and there's also medications that in some cases uh, are given. De terapia, un profesional puede darle uh, terapia, lo que se dice talk therapy, hablando con, contigo y tratan de hacerte cambiar tu manera de pensar, de cómo actúas, para que pienses más positivo, o también medicamentos si son uh, necesarios. Ahora, uh, la anxiety is next. I'm going to talk about some of the symptoms of anxiety. Anxiety could be defined as stress that is out of proportion, extreme amounts of stress, uh, the inability to set aside a worry. You're always worried, always tensed uh, about anything. And some changes that you can go through include uh, behavioral changes, hypervigilance, irritability, cognitive changes like lack of concentration, unwanted thoughts, uh, and also common are insomnia, heart palpitations, trembling, shaking, um, those kind of symptoms. La ansiedad es definida como un estrés fuera de control, exagerado. Te mortificas por todo en cada momento y todo de algo chiquito haces algo grande. Puede haber cambios en cómo te comportas, quizás enojarte, estar hiperactivo, uh, no te puedes concentrar, pensamientos que no quieres tener negativos, ahí están, fatiga, uh, insomnia. Y también palpitaciones del corazón, estar temblando y cosas así. So uh, for therapy, the professional counselor or psychologist will also provide cognitive behavioral therapy. Uh, and there's also medication like uh, Xanax and others that can work. Uh, para terapias, el profesional también les puede dar terapia uh, verbal hablando con ustedes y para sentirse mejor. O también hay medicamentos que en unos casos pueden ser uh, prescribed. Now, even from home, there are things that you can do to kind of uh, minimize the symptoms and to feel better, to overcome feelings of depression or anxiety. And my colleagues already mentioned uh, some of them throughout their presentations. So for example, uh, exercising, when you exercise, you release endorphins, and that makes you feel happy. And it's also a stress reliever. So any type of exercise from home uh, can work. You don't need a gym. I, I know for a lot of people, they miss that. But from home, you can do uh, exercise, uh, listening to music, uh, watching TV, doing a hobby from home, video games, board games with the family, dancing. Uh, social media can also be a distraction for a lot of people like Facebook and Instagram, TikTok, which is becoming uh, very, very popular. And uh, like my colleagues mentioned, it is important to not watch too much news because that can be overwhelming. Uh, some of it is good because you're going to be informed and we need to be informed. But those people that watch the news 24 7, the anxiety will get worse. So uh, you need to uh, minimize on that. And uh, social distancing does not mean uh, emotional distancing. And I think that's something Dr. Alanis also kind of mentioned. So uh, even though physically we cannot be with others or go to a restaurant or to a concert or to many places where you would want to go, uh, any person, any family member or friend is just a phone call away. So you can always call them, a text. Uh, with technology now, there's Zoom and Skype and so many resources that you can still uh, stay connected with one another. Uh, les estaba comentando en inglés que aparte de la terapia que un profesional les puede dar para la depresión o la ansiedad, también hay cosas que desde la casa uno puede hacer para sentirse mejor y, y dejar la depresión y la ansiedad. Por ejemplo, y una de estas cosas mis compañeras ya, ya mencionaron, hacer ejercicio. Uh, cuando haces ejercicio, tu cuerpo suelta endorfinas, que son estas sustancias que te hacen sentir mejor. Escuchar música, ver televisión. Uh, bailar, social media como Facebook o Instagram, jugar juegos en familia, pintar, uh, cualquier tipo de actividad que te haga sentir bien. Y no ver las noticias todo el día porque eso puede aumentar la ansiedad. Es bueno ver un noticiero y estar informado para no estar cegado o, o ignorante de lo que está pasando, pero no todo el día porque eso puede ser un daño. 
y aunque ahorita estamos con distancia social y no podemos ir a lugares que quisiéramos como tiendas o restaurantes o conciertos, es muy importante que sigas conectado con la gente virtualmente. Hay llamadas telefónicas, hay textos, hay Zoom, Skype, uh, muchas maneras que uno puede estar conectado con las personas. No debe de ser distancia emocional, solo social. Um, now, also with depression, it's important to uh, train your mind that this is only temporary. It's not going to be forever. All of us will overcome this together. If we obey all the guidelines, the sooner we'll get there. So uh, train your mind into that kind of thinking and replacing any type of negative thought with a more positive, rational thoughts. Uh, mindfulness, which is, I think, something also Dr. Alanis mentioned, uh, enjoying the moments. Don't think too much about the future because it's quite uncertain. And typically with anxiety, people focus too much on the future, but focus on the present, the here and now. Enjoy each and every day, every second with your family, uh, dinner time, the game you're playing with your family, that particular phone call with your brother or sister, uh, whatever activity that you are doing at the moment, enjoy it to the maximum. That's what mindfulness is. Um, living your life in the present and enjoying it to the maximum and counting your blessings showing gratitude for what you have because typically people focus on the things they don't have so it's easy right now to focus on what we don't have which is this liberty to go out and live our normal life at work and socialize and so forth and if you focus on that then obviously you can feel anxious and depressed but instead if you focus on the blessings you have show gratitude for what you have you have a nice house, you have a family, you have food, you have health, uh, then you'll feel a lot better just focusing on the blessings and all the good things uh, going on in your life. También para la depresión, desde tu casa puedes hacer cosas tú mismo para mejorar. Hace rato mencioné algunas como el ejercicio, la música, uh, televisión, bailar o social media y también uh, cambiar pensamientos negativos a positivos y recordarte que este problema, esta pandemia es temporal. Vamos a salir de esto juntos al rato, muy pronto. Todos volveremos a nuestra vida normal y entre más sigamos las recomendaciones que nos da el gobierno, uh, los políticos y también los uh, expertos en salud, más pronto saldremos de esto. Entonces, pensar positivamente, esto es temporal, vamos a salir adelante, vivir el momento y disfrutar cada segundo, en vez de pensar en el futuro, que muchas veces es incierto, especialmente ahorita con la pandemia, enfocarte en el presente, disfrutar el día de hoy con la familia, la llamada de, te de teléfono, telefónica que estás haciendo, disfrutarla al máximo, la hamburguesa que te estás comiendo, disfrutarla al máximo, uh, el juego que estás haciendo en familia, disfrutarlo al máximo, el momento. Uh, y también contar y enfocarte en las bendiciones que tienes, porque los estudios psicológicos sí demuestran que entre más agradecimiento tengas, más feliz te sientes. En lugar de enfocarte en lo que no tenemos, en estos momentos todos nosotros no tenemos la libertad de hacer lo que quisiéramos, ir a trabajar, ir a un restaurante, a una tienda, a un paseo, pero no enfocarse en eso es la clave, porque si te enfocas en eso vas a estar bien triste y ansioso, pero enfocarte en lo que sí tienes, que es salud, eh, tienes familia, tienes un hogar, tienes comida, todas esas bendiciones, enfocándote en eso, te vas a sentir, te vas a sentir mucho, mucho mejor. Y para la ansiedad también relajarte y cerrar los ojos y respirar profundamente, eso es muy uh, recomendado. For anxiety, also meditation, deep breathing is very recommended, where you close your eyes and you breathe in and out exhale and inhale for a few minutes to to kind of relax um there's also apps i know with technology and, and especially for the youth uh, they're always on different apps if you search you can google the top 25 mental health apps and they'll give you a list uh, a lot of them are for free some of them have like a a low fee but some of the apps that are for free include um the it's called Not Okay, and that's for suicide prevention. Uh, there's also the What's Up app for depression and anxiety. They'll send you messages and reminders 
that are important. Uh, Happify app to overcome negative thoughts. And for anxiety, uh, especially for teenagers, there's also MindShift, another app uh, that you can look into. Les estaba comentando que también hay aplicaciones que desde el celular la gente, y especialmente la juventud, que lo hace mucho, uh, puede uh, bajar del internet apps como una que se llama Not OK para el suicidio, WhatsApp app para la depresión y la ansiedad, y otra app que se llama Happyfy, que te ayuda a uh, cambiar pensamientos negativos a positivos. Y también una app que se llama Mind Shift para la ansiedad, especialmente de los adolescentes. Esa puede ser otra herramienta, otro tubo para que la juventud también agarre estos tipos de consejos en una manera más práctica y quizás más fácil para ellos, porque todos están siempre en el celular, en el internet, y con apps. There's also a suicide hotline, always remember that, 1-800-273-TALK. 8255 and that's 24 7. It's free and it's confidential and it saves, it has saved many people's lives. Acuérdense también que hay una uh, hotline, un número para los que tienen pensamientos suicidas, que es 1 800 273 8255, uh, las 24 horas del día, los 7 días de la semana, y es gratis y confidencial. Eso también es muy uh, útil. Y uh, the last thing I have for you all is on um, some of the local resources that you can take advantage of. I know Dr. Alanis mentioned that uh, she herself is doing telemedicine, meeting with clients uh, over Zoom or, or these type of applications. Uh, Border Region is another option here in Rio Grande City in Star County, Border Region Behavioral Health Center. And I was talking to them a few days ago. Uh, they're still providing services using telemedicine either a phone call or Zoom, Skype, Facebook, or WhatsApp. Uh, they have a licensed uh, social worker, a nurse practitioner, a psychiatrist, and also an LPC that can provide uh, these services at Border Region using telemedicine. They do the intake, they provide cognitive behavioral training, and also skills training uh, via telemedicine. Uh, in case of emergencies, they are accepting emergency walk-ins and also screenings. But uh, other than emergencies, they're trying to uh, stick to this because of the guidelines in place uh, right now in Star, Star County of uh, social distancing. They're open Mondays to Fridays from 8 to 5. And um, their phone number is 956-487-3748. 956-487-3748. Three seven four eight, and they do have a crisis hotline as well, twenty four seven, and their website is www.borderregion.org, uh, and it is important. Like in general, we always give this advice, and especially during this time of the pandemic, to let go of the stigma that oftentimes is associated with mental health. Uh, mental health, uh, for example, that is only for crazy people. Uh, we need to get rid of that mentality because any one of us can benefit from counseling and from mental health. So um, take advantage of these resources. Hay muchos recursos locales en, en caso que piensen ustedes que necesitan hablar con un profesional, terapia. Dr. Alanis mencionó hace unos minutos que ella está haciendo uh, terapia con sus clientes usando tecnología, telemedicine, como se le llama. Y Border Region Behavioral Health Center aquí en Rio Grande City está haciendo lo mismo. Hay un, un psiquiatra, una enfermera, un uh, social worker y un consejero que pueden hablar contigo por teléfono o por aplicaciones como Zoom, Skype, FaceTime o WhatsApp. Y ahí por teléfono te pueden ayudar y dar terapia. En casos de emergencia, sí están uh, viéndote en persona, pero están tratando de hacerlo uh, por teléfono o por video, por la situación en Star County y para seguir las reglas de distanciamiento social. Uh, están en Pharmacy Road, ahí está su location, abiertos de lunes a viernes de 8 a 5. Su número de teléfono es el 956-487-3748. 956-487-3748. Y también tienen un número de crisis las 24 horas. 
su website es www.borderregion.org. Y uh, es muy importante, nosotros todos los cuatro sé que muy seguido decimos esto en presentaciones a nuestros estudiantes y a todo el mundo, que hay que dejar a un lado este estigma negativo que hay con la salud mental, que mucha gente piensa que solamente los locos van al psicólogo o al psiquiatra o, o, o que necesitan terapia y en realidad no es así. Todos nosotros podemos beneficiar de ayuda profesional. And that's what I have. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Muchas gracias, Mr. Saravia. Thank you very much for your presentation. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to summarize many of the key points that were brought up today by the panel. And so just in quick summary today, and then from there, we'll open it up to the question and answer. So starting off with some of the key points for today. So here are two important ways to lessen anxiety, as was previously mentioned. One, we have to distinguish facts from rumors. And that is critical, that uh, there are too many rumors abound um, about this. Uh, so it's imperative that we get the information from credible sources, whether it's a city webpage, CDC, or whether it's a county's page or the state or, or health department, get information from credible sources. Que Julano de Tal, que la comadre, el compadre nos dijo esto. We have to avoid that because that only creates and adds more anxiety to our already a volatile situation. So please keep that in mind today. If you get any information, make sure that is accurate information and that we're not promoting any rumors because uh, many of us have heard some of the rumors out there to avoid obsessing over endless coronavirus coverage. Maybe 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes in the evening, just get the factual information and uh, let's minimize the 24 hour coverage of coronavirus because it, is, it does add to our own anxiety and stress, especially when the information keeps repeating itself. So again, keep that in mind, uh, get, get information absolutely, get educated, but there's a point where too much information is not good to, for us and not good for our children. Other ways, for example, is taking a self-survey of how you are feeling. How are we feeling today? Am I feeling uh, angry? Am I feeling irritated? Am I not sleeping in, enough? Am I sleeping too much? Am I drinking too much now? Am I smoking too many cigars now? What exactly are the behaviors that are showing and pay, pay attention to that because it's a way, these are can serve as warning signs that something is wrong. And uh, do acknowledge how you are feeling. It's okay to feel afraid, to be sad, to have, you know, feel lonely, for us to feel powerless over this situation. It's okay that, that this uncertainty, uncertainty, let's acknowledge those feelings. And you can certainly talk to someone to a close friend, a confidant, or, or your spouse, or, uh, or seek professional help, but it's all right to acknowledge these feelings that, that we are experiencing at this moment in time with this global pandemic. It's, it's to need to refrain, refrain this, this current circumstance. If we come across, and this was mentioned before, where we feel trapped or stuck, and we have this mindset of being stuck in our house, that only is gonna to add to the stress. However, I challenge you, instead of feeling stuck and have that mindset, we can easily reframe it to, I can finally focus on my home and myself and my family. So looking at it from that perspective and doing just one productive thing per day can lead to a more positive attitude. One productive thing that you can do that day. And you can start with one and then you can certainly add for example, here's the opportunity for us to set sights on, on long avoided tasks, aka honeydews. Honeydews around the house is an opportunity to do some of those, whether it's painting a fence or whether it's fixing something. These opportunities are there that we can do within our home and take that initiative. And I'm sure for those of us out there, there are many honeydews that we can do around the house, correct? And this, this could be as an opportunity to take advantage of those or 
um, learn something new, whether it's woodwork or whether it's uh, learning how to install certain items around the house, things of that nature. Reorganizing, creating something you've always wanted to do and haven't had the opportunity for different reasons, but now this might be the opportunity to do so. Now, also keep in mind that our own homes, if we have a chaotic home, that can certainly lead to a chaotic mind. So you have control of being able to organize our homes at this time, uh, make them clean, predictable, and that can help with that uncertainty. So uh, these are other things that we can do as we're trying to minimize the, this and cope with this situation, paying attention to our thoughts. Thoughts can help us or they can hurt us. So take notice of what we are thinking. Do we have this negative attitude? Is, is everything bothering us? What is the story that keeps replaying in our mind at this point? Is it a negative outlook? Um, and then challenge those, those thinking errors. Challenge those irrational thoughts that sometimes come with, these, uh, pan, with this type of pandemic. So for example, here's one thinking error that certainly occurs quite often, ignoring the good. And this occurs when we pay more attention to the bad things that are going on and we ignore the something good that does happen. And uh, such as sometimes in, in uh, situations like these, we might pay attention to the number of new COVID-19 uh, patient or positive uh, patients, but we ignore the ones that have recovered, for example. We might not pay as much attention to that or the numbers of people that are recovering from this or are being able to get clear. So again, do pay attention to the good things that are happening around us. Another example with our children. How many times does a child do nine good deeds and around the house, for example, but they happen to have one bad deed and we just happen on that one, we happen to focus on that one bad instant. So again, keep in mind that there were nine great things that they did, but Let's not focus on just that one bad one. Um, blowing things up, how often do we blow things out of proportion? That's another rational thought in, in thinking errors that we sometimes make. And this occurs when we make a big deal out of something, something small. Um, the phrase of making a, a mountain out of a, out of a molehill, for example. Um, an example could be, I'm not allowed to see my friends on Friday, so therefore my life is miserable or horrible. Of course, we're blowing things out of proportion here. Now with this, this pandemic, and, and I've heard this at times, by the way, a total economic meltdown, world is ending. How, and I've had that conversation or the conspiracy theories about what this pandemic means and how this new, so, and going back to that, just keep in mind that, look at the situation from a perspective that, is, okay, it's rational. Let me think this logically. Como dice mi, mi tío, viendo las cosas bien y despacio. Let's think them through as we're going through these type of situations and many other. Um, so again, just keep in mind that uh, how we think of a situation will determine how we feel. So if we look at this pandemic from a negative point of view, then chances are it's going to affect us internally, which therefore we end up with the anxieties and the stress and the fear uh, granted. I'm not saying we have to ignore the facts. No, absolutely not. We educate ourselves. We find out the information and then based on the information that we act accordingly. We all are gonna experience adversity in our lives, all of us, but how do we deal with that adversity is important. How do we deal with it? How do we cope with it? How do we strategize? How do we keep moving forward from situations that are going to afflict our lives? Now, continuing, um, and as I mentioned this, or has mentioned before here, direct your attention. Where do we direct our attention? We can completely, con we cannot completely control the thoughts that go through our, through our heads, right? Uh, sometimes it is hard to control, but what we can do is we can direct our attention. Where are we going to place the focus on? Where? I mean, I could be going through all these scenarios in my mind, but how, what is the focus I'm going to have? What am I going to do with that information? Am I going to place my focus on doing things that are going to be productive, 
or focusing on things that I can do and are within my control, as was mentioned previously. What are things are what things around me are outside my control, and what are the things that are within my control, and I can have a direct effect on. Practice gratitude. I know this was mentioned too. Highlight what is good in our lives as opposed to what is wrong or missing. So, and that could be just some something small. What are the little things around your house and your families and your your uh, relatives? What are the good things that are happening or your friends? Uh, or your own personal life. What is happening that you can be grateful for? And it all starts with one thing too, but highlighting those. And it was mentioned before, the mindfulness. And these are times when unplugging is very productive as well. When you unplug, where you set up a tech-free zone, where you simply just put everything away, turn off phones, turn off any media, and just simply be in a state of being. And uh, it was, mentioned prior but it's imperative as we continue to evolve with this is what else can i do um, to help myself and help my family it was mentioned too that love is a verb what does that mean well be with the people you enjoy the text the emails the setting the skype facetime uh, here's an opportunity to forgive as well look for opportunities to let go of others shortcomings serve others is there an opportunity for us to serve others right now during this time? And is there an opportunity which by focusing on others' needs, we also find a way to not be so preoccupied with ourselves? So that's another way that by serving others, and again, what's within the capacity to serve? Obviously, if there's an opportunity to serve others, like right now, right here, for example, I have three of my colleagues here that are serving others by providing and allowing these expertise and, and talking about this, uh, having this COVID-19 summit, is they're sharing their expertise and knowledge to the community. And in a way they're volunteering their time. So thank you so much for my colleagues here for, for bringing this information, for sharing your expertise, because all this information is gonna help our community and better better deal with this this pandemic so thank you so much for for volunteering your time and i know we were joking earlier that i was not going to send them a check so that's not going to happen but thank you for volunteering your time uh, again that goes a long ways for uh for um uh, managing this situation because we all can uh, can put in our two cents worth and finally it will add up so, and this was mentioned too, following a daily routine, and that's imperative. Have a routine at home. What is the routine you can follow, and uh, especially for children? And that's, that's imperative that we do, yeah. because of structure, daily structure has a positive effect on the overall well-being of individuals, particularly children. So, find some routine for them, and there are many examples. You can go on through different educational uh, sites where you can can get uh, information and and uh, ways of, of uh, having these type of schedules and and planning and so on. So with that being said, it is as we continue to deal with this COVID-19 pandemic, um, my colleagues here shared a lot of valuable information that will go a long ways in helping people cope and their families to cope. Now, keep in mind that there are a lot of resources that you can still access, but today really we wanted to have this conversation to begin this process. And I know we have done many of these uh, efforts and strategies, but there's always room for more, particularly as we move from the next phase, because we will get through this. There's no doubt we're gonna get through this and we have. And when you're looking at the numbers um, of uh, active patients here in Stark County, it's, it's minimal. Right now it is minimal and we wanna keep it that way, but it was imperative to deal with the mental health side of it too, because it begins to show in ourselves. It might take two weeks, it might take three weeks, but eventually we start feeling it internally. We, we feel that stress and the anxiety and that adds up. And you can feel it sometimes in your body, in the back of your neck. Where are you feeling that stress? 
Acknowledge it though. If you're feeling stressed out and you feel it in the back of your neck right here and your head, you can barely pick up your head, that's your body telling you, hey, there's something wrong. Let's acknowledge it and then find the mechanisms to deal with it. So with that being said, at this point, we're gonna, by the way, I wanna thank the uh, media outlets and the radio stations that are that joined us today. Uh, thank you so much for, for sharing our message and the more people access this message, the better. So thank you so much to radio station La Estrella, we have with us also Telemundo, La Pistolera, Channel 23 and Channel 4. We have El Rey 105. We have The Monitor, Channel 5, and Univision. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, it, uh, it is certainly an, a great opportunity for us to share the message and get to as many people as possible because this is valuable information that's going to help our community um, deal and cope more effectively with this global pandemic. So with that, um, we went ahead and sent out a, a list, or should I say an invite to all the media outlets and based on how they responded for RSVP, that's the way we're going to follow the questioning. So at this point, I'm going to open it up to to the outlets to see if they have any questions and feel free uh, to answer any of the questions. Um, or to my panelists, feel free to answer any of the questions or if they're directed specifically to you. So I will ask when I call out the name of the media outlet or station, you can click on the webcam so we can see who you are, identify yourself and of course, <laughs> And that way, please feel free to ask. Uh, and we'll start off with two questions per person, uh, per station, and then uh, we'll proceed and do a, a rotation uh, of questions. So starting off with, I have here La Estrella. So do we have anyone from La Estrella? And if you have any questions at this time? La Estrella, can you hear us? Yes, hi. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you to all the people there on behalf of uh, 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 Mr. Tejano Loco, uh, we're here representing him. He's, uh, he cannot attend right now the station, but uh, thanks so much for the information. Uh, uh, this time we don't have any questions right now. So thanks so much for the info, and uh, we hope uh, we can be, you know, on the next meetings uh, and uh, consecutive meetings uh, coming from, from all the information from the city. The, Muchísimas gracias por acompañarnos. Es uh, muy importante de promover toda esta información. Este, so muchísimas gracias por participar, por su participación. Y esperemos en la otra con su, con su asistencia. So again, to Estrella 95.1. Muchísimas gracias. Y los esperamos en la próxima. Next, we have Telemundo. Hola, buenas tardes. Aquí Telemundo. Um, todo, um, toda la información uh, fue muy buena y, y creo que no, no ocupamos más información, pero muchísimas gracias por, por su tiempo. ¿eh? Muchísimas gracias a ustedes. Este, y es importante que mantenernos informados. Este, so, muchísimas gracias por, por, tu, por su participación. Gracias. Gracias, gracias. We have with us La Pistolera. Okay. Well, maybe she'll. Okay. So then we'll continue. We'll have uh, next, we have channel 23 and channel 4. Do we have anyone from channel 23, channel 4? Anyone from channel 23 or channel 4? Okay, so let's, uh, let's move on to, uh, we have also 
Hervé 105, is he with us? Okay, so who of my colleagues wants to take a stab at that question? Anyone? All right, so we'll have with Dr. Alanis. I cannot hear you, Dr. Alanis. Can you turn on your mic? All right, so we cannot hear Dr. Alanis. All right, so. Mr. Sarabia, can you go ahead and answer that question? Yes, well, yeah, to, to them, pretty much a lot of these recommendations would also apply to them and also uh, them reminding themselves that they are the heroes for, for doing what they are doing. That can also be very reassuring and, and, and by us being grateful and maybe sending letters or sharing our appreciation in social media. Uh, we know family or friends who are uh, first responders, letting them know how grateful we are. Uh, that's something that we can also do to to make them feel better and, and, and valued and appreciated. But pretty much a lot of the advice we mentioned uh, obviously also applies to them and the way they think and what they can do uh, to feel better. One of the main things with uh, first responders that, that I've seen in, in previous practice is it's okay, and this is imperative. It's imperative for everyone, but particularly first responders. And by the way, thank you so much to all our first responders for the work that you're doing during this time of need in this global pandemic. And it is imperative that first responders, first and foremost, acknowledge the feelings that they're going through. And it's okay, it's, it's okay if they're feeling burned out uh, if they're feeling stressed and if there's anxiety or and, and uh, speak to someone because sometimes we don't acknowledge those feelings and they just add more to to the weight that we're carrying on our shoulders so for them particularly it's imperative that they acknowledge what they're feeling and after all we are not superheroes right i mean at the end uh, we we love the first responders. We love what they're doing. We appreciate them, but also they have to take care of themselves. They have to acknowledge that they're human beings. That and as human beings, sometimes we are fragile, and sometimes yes, we show strength out there and we show stamina and we show all these feelings, but we bottle them up inside and we don't communicate it to anyone. So. Those are the opportunities for them to truly assess and take a, a survey, a self-survey, and acknowledge what they're feeling, and at that point, being able to cope with that and deal with it, as opposed to just hold it in and hold it in and hold it in. No, absolutely not. Ms. Compiana, is there anything you'd like to add to that? Um, I totally agree with Mrs. Sarabia and uh, with you, Mayor. Um, I'm sure we can turn this back to you, Mrs. Um, they are the heroes. Ms. Compian, your, your mic seems to be having a little technical difficulty here. Oh. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Is that better? So, so day in and day out, you know, these healthcare professionals go in unselfishly giving of themselves um, for the better of our communities and you know our hearts and our prayers and our thanks go out to them definitely uh, and to their families we know that the stresses that this may cause their families is great but uh, know that we support the work that you're doing we support the hours that you put in and we just um, continue to wish you and your families the best and and i agree uh, the feelings, the emotions, sometimes I'm sure feeling overwhelmed and the anxieties that come along with that. And it is okay to feel that. Um, we need to understand that and that seeking others and 
sharing those feelings is totally, totally um, necessary. Definitely. So thank you to all of those healthcare workers, all of those essential workers out there in other fields as well. Next, we have the uh, the monitor. Do we have anyone from the monitor? Yes, but Anise Garcia here with the monitor newspaper. I had a question about um, dealing with stress that's caused by uh, financial situations. You know, a lot of people are probably dealing with either being uh, um, either furloughed or laid off from their jobs and maybe are having a loss of income. So I was wondering if you had any recommendations for how to deal with that. Dr. Alaniz, can you hear us? Yes, um, I'm trying to, okay, sorry. I disconnected from my computer and I, now I'm using my phone. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, according, I'm going to go back to the question that Herbe had asked, and I concur with Mr. Uh, Mr. Sarabia. S many of the things that we said, they are for mental health professionals as well. Part of my presentation was stemming from uh, a presentation that I had, a webinar in that regard. So it can be used for mental health professionals. Usually, content behavior therapy is used at the moment but it's the same thing. It's mentioned the serenity prayer is in there, the relaxation techniques come from there as well. So it is for the lay public and for anyone else that is uh, willing to accept or, or to receive anything that we want to, you know, that we want to gain out of, you know, positiveness, it has to do a lot with it. So uh, that is that is what we have and, and pretty, uh, a certain Mr. Saravia in that perspective. And I'm sorry, uh, the other question, since I was transitioning from my Surface Pro to the phone, uh, can you repeat it again? Or I can answer it in Spanish, but sorry, what's the question? Um, yeah, uh, my question was about uh, people dealing with uh, stress due to their finance their, or their financial situation. Uh, because we were, we're having a lot of people who might be either laid off or they've been furloughed and maybe are not having a steady a stream of income as it did before and might be experiencing stress because of that. And so I was asking if you have any recommendations for how to deal with that. Okay. So once again, we, you know, what can we do at this point? If I get frustrated because I cannot change anything, you know, that's going to get worse than me. So I understand, you know, some people might not have the means at the moment. And one of the things I, I, I am thankful for, and I tell my girls, I say, you know what, we're thankful to God because we still get paid for the job that we do at, um, at home, but there's some people that don't. So we need to be thankful for what we have. How about those that don't have it? Like what can, what can they do? Well, one of my recommendations would be one day at a time. Uh, I know the government, uh, our federal government is helping out. You know, there's a lot of help for students going to the university at the moment, they're offering uh, scholarships, like extra scholarships. There are restaurants that are giving out uh, food. I just saw on Saturday, there will be some uh, restaurants giving out food. There's some people on Facebook even saying, you know what, if you don't have uh, something to eat, please let me know, I will do it. Paying for um, utilities. Uh, one of the things, my mother is a 77 year old woman and she, she has internet. So I said, mother, you're not at your house at the moment. She's with me right now. And I said, let's call uh, uh, Spectrum and see if they can lower your rate. And I did call and they said, yes, for the next month, she can only pay, she can pay $14. So, you know, there's help out there. We just need to be able to look for it uh, and be positive about it. I know that all of this is out of our control and we get stressed about it you know, it's not helping us. We got to be active, proactive. Sean Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. One of the things is be proactive. I can I can fr get frustrated and be upset, but then I can do something about it. So that would be some of my recommendations uh, just to work with that. And I'm glad you, you mentioned that, Dr. Alanis, because 
to continue on that point is what can I do today and what's within my control today that I can do towards minimizing that financial stress? Could I, for example, look for those resources? Uh, our webpage, our city webpage, for example, has different resources available to uh, business owners that are struggling during this time. We have our EDC has provided different resources available. Uh, do I call the unemployment line as well or Texas workforce? Mm -hmm. What is it that I can do on a day in day out basis to start changing my circumstance? And of course, we realize it's not easy. Uh, but going back to what can I do today and every day so I can start accessing those potential resources or potential avenues that will in turn minimize the stress because now I feel productive. Now I feel like I'm doing something to change my circumstance as opposed to just remain there and not do anything or take any actions. Uh, so doing something every day, visiting with people, calling people, for example, or resources or all those are steps where now the individual feels activated. The individual feels like they're actually doing something that's within their control to manage their circumstance. So taking those steps every day, you know, every day have a goal. Maybe I'll call three different resources. Every day find a, a way to get more information, more contacts, and slowly begin to, to uh, feel that I'm being productive towards my alleviating my circumstance. And as Dr. mentioned, whether it's I need to call the uh, spectrum, I need to call the light company, is there a way or do I need to contact the city, for example, in certain circumstances or my employer or my previous employer? Is there any way but every day do or do something where you can feel productive towards getting to a, a desired outcome mr saravia or ms compian do you all have anything else to add to that um <clears throat> looking for resources of course um and i think that with the heightened anxiety and with the loss of employment comes um feelings of not wanting to share not wanting to share how you're feeling and and it's important that we recognize that the more we share with others resources may be available um other people may our, our family members or our friends may know of other resources and but many times we um create a shell around ourselves and we think you know i don't want anyone to know that i'm feeling this that i'm so anxious but plus i don't have work or what do i do and aquí estoy and i'm just gonna but i think that if once we we're able to put that behind us and and go forth and say okay i like you know i need to do this and if i take charge and call like you say spectrum call the light company call the city and see what resources are available. Um, I have been seeing how restaurants um, are pro are providing meals. Many different outlets, even here in our community, are providing meals and resources to families that normally wouldn't be out there. So, um, yeah, looking out there and and not feeling as much as the sense of um loss shame embarrassment but sharing those feelings with others those resources may come about um and and being persistent i know that um services are are available and sometimes we'll make a phone call and there's no answer or for some reason we got got cut off or the line dropped be persistent and persist and, and go forth and move ahead. Know that, um, like uh, Dr. Alanis mentioned, with our, with our good health and we take it one day at a time, these moments are of uncertainty. And despite uh, every, every individual circumstances, we are all living in days that we've never known before. We're living in moments that have we don't have a guide but we're going day by day on the advice of of experts in medicine experts in infrastructure experts that take care of us and governing bodies and um 
the resources are out there. We just need to keep looking and, and seeking them out. And like I said, um, also utilizing and, and those resources that are right at our fingertips. Sometimes it may be our neighbor that knows of a certain resource. So making phone calls and, and saying, hey, do you know of anything? Is there something? And um, those are all good ideas. Thank you, Ms. Compia. Next, we also have channel five. Do we have anyone from channel five? Any questions? And also we have Univision. Tenemos una persona de Univision. Cualquier pregunta que tenga sobre esta reunión. Okay. Okay, so returning to, okay, Les Tres already up, Telemundo already knows up, and then we have La Pistolera. Are they back with us? Okay. Okay. Mr. Sarabia? Yeah, so it's important for them uh, to remind themselves that it's definitely not their fault uh, uh, to try and, and let go of those feelings of guilt uh, and um, realize mentally thinking that it's something temporary. It's going to be a few days of uh, being isolated, but if all the guidelines are followed, um, they will recover. And, and also, like I think Mayor Villarreal mentioned earlier, focusing on all those cases of survival, all the positive cases of people who have recovered and not just on, on the negativity. Uh, and as far as the caregivers, the same thing goes with them, uh, taking it a day at a time, uh, practicing a lot of these strategies that we mentioned uh, throughout the conference, throughout the summits, uh, mindfulness. Um, uh, they themselves also have the right to express how they feel, to feel stress and anxiety and, and depression and, and all of them, victims and caregivers uh, not being afraid to ask for help. Uh, mental health uh, resources are out there. We've mentioned a lot of options earlier and uh, taking advantage of those, not letting the emotions inside because that definitely will make things worse. So expressing themselves, talking to family and friends and talking to a professional uh, if needed. Dr. Alanis, is there anything you would like to add to that? Did I lose you or? I'm Piano? sorry. Oh, go ahead. My. my yeah, I lost you there. Yeah, by itself, it's just turning on and off. So I don't know if you'll be able to hear everything. But uh, if they have somebody. Well, we're having technical difficulties with your feed, uh, Dr. Alaniz. Ms. Compian, can you hear us? I have no idea. I don't know why it's on and off, on and off. It's. Right. Well, Doctor, oh, sorry. Uh, Ms. Com go, go ahead, Ms. Compian. Is there anything you would like to add to, to what Mr. Well, first and foremost, like Mr. Saravia said, um, and, and the notion that those who become affected physically with COVID-19. We know from, we know that um, COVID-19 is um, rampant in some areas. It's not, a, there shouldn't be a stigma as, oh, it doesn't discriminate. We're seeing the numbers, especially in other communities where 
COVID-19 is not discriminating and there's um, should be no, no shame, but of course feeling that aside from their physical ailments, feeling that um, how could I not have prevented this? And those are things that basically, of course, are happening. Um, and knowing that um, health, physical health is very much dependent on our emotional health. So if we have individuals who are affected by COVID know that like um, through mindfulness, through a sense of peace, through either prayer, meditation, positive thoughts, putting ourselves in a positive frame, uh, frame of mind is going to increase the chances of survival. Um, we look at the numbers and we tend to focus on the numbers of people that are falling victim or very, very ill, but the numbers are greater. I believe the numbers are greater for survival. When, especially when um, all, all guidelines are followed. And um, yes, it's a, some time of isolation and stress on caregivers, but by now we are better able to follow some guidelines and to have more guidelines of those who have survived, those who have overcome and um, show, show greater response, especially when uh, we have to put ourselves and know and believe in our heart that I'm going to overcome. And you know, it's, it's an unfortunate, unfortunate um, event to come down but that emotional health has to be there where we're positive and we're hopeful for the future and we go forward and we, we hope for the best. And we just put ourselves in, in, the, in the mindset that this will, we will overcome those individuals that are affected, will overcome. Uh, the mindset plays such an important part. Thank you, Ms. Compia. Can you hear us now, Dr. Alanis? Can you hear us? I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm can you hear me now? Yes, we can. And if you uh, don't mind answering the question in Spanish, and it's how do you manage guilt feelings? So, yeah. Lost you again, Dr. Alanis. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Dr. Alanis, can you hear? We lost you. Uh, Ms. Custer, do we have any other questions that have come in? Okay. Okay, Univision, do we have Ms. Ramirez? From Univision, do we have? Está con nosotros. Sí, uh, me, me pueden escuchar? Sí, la escuchamos muy bien. Y gracias por participar. No, gracias a ustedes por toda la información que nos están ofreciendo. Eh, básicamente, sé que eh, tienen, hay muchas preguntas, y hay muchos compañeros todavía esperando, pero básicamente me gustaría saber uh, qué tipo de, en español por supuesto, qué tipo de, de, de reportes hay con mayor frecuencia to, debido a todo lo de COVID-19, reportes de... de de personas con efectos psicológicos, qué tipo de, de, de reportes han obtenido y cuáles son las sugerencias que ustedes dan en un momento determinado para estas personas que están sufriendo de, de algún tipo de impacto psicológico por, por toda esta pandemia. Mr. Sarabia. Sí, entonces la pregunta era que, ¿cuál era la pregunta? Como la pregunta es, bien. básicamente, ¿qué tipo de reportes o impactos psicológicos han tenido con mayor frecuencia en los residentes del Valle por COVID-19? ¿Y cuáles serían sus sugerencias para tratar de eliminar esta clase de, de problemas emocionales en, en, en las personas de, del Valle? Sí, no sé si ha habido investigaciones específicamente del Valle, pero por lo que he leído uh, de esta pandemia global, se ha visto mucha depresión, mucho post-traumatic stress disorder, que es uh, como un desorden de ansiedad después de un evento 
traumático como puede ser esta pandemia. Las, las recomendaciones son, uh, así como dijimos durante esta conferencia, es muy importante vivir el momento, uh, practicar eh, pensamientos positivos y uh, uh, obtener ayuda de la familia, recursos locales, ir a terapia si es necesario con un psicólogo, con un uh, consejero. Uh, uh, hay muchas opciones, muchas de ellas a veces son gratis o de bajo costo. Uh, ni siquiera tienen que salir de la casa porque muchos de estos lugares ofrecen uh, telemedicina, que es a través de teléfono o a través de video, muy práctico desde tu casa. Puedes agarrar uh, ayuda profesional y uh, es muy importante expresar cómo te sientes y si es algo que nos está afectando a todos, a todo el mundo, no importa la clase social, la raza, edad, ni ninguna otra, uh, a todos nos afecta. Entonces es muy importante expresarnos con familia y amigos, uh, practicar pensamientos positivos, distraernos, no ver las noticias todo el día y, y, y si nada de eso nos ayuda al 100%, definitivamente ir con un profesional para agarrar ayuda profesional. Pero muchas veces nuestro propio uh, uh, cambio en nuestra mente, en nuestras acciones, puede hacernos sentir mejor. ¿Y otra pregunta, mis, mis Ramírez? You keep coming in and out, Dr. Alanis. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. Dr. Alanis, you can you are you able to let's see if we can get Answer the question. All right, go ahead. Okay. So, you know, as, as anything else, you know, this is something like we hear over and over unprecedented time. We were not expecting any of this, but it's like anything, any other situation, we're going to have to learn to cope with it. We know that there is a change. What are we going to do? What am I going to do different? You know, one day at a time, you was mentioned already, there's nothing I can do, only what I can do for myself, which is stay positive the best I can. And I think beginning from the point of I'm alive, I'm healthy, and I can do one thing at a time. Take take one step at a time and go back to normality one step at a time. You know, I, I am not going to think about a week from now, a month from now. We, we already have guidelines. You need to stay home here. You need to do this. You need to do that. You know, But I am not going to worry about that because right now I'm alive, I'm present, I'm healthy, I'm thankful that I have a place to sleep and where I can eat. So one day at a time, whenever I get to that bridge, I will go through it because I believe very much that we have the capability to just regenerate ourselves. Like I said, when there's a cut, I said it in Spanish earlier, when there's a cut, our body has the capacity to heal itself and we take care of the wound the same the brain if we feed good things it will be and i'm thinking already about my students at school you know how are we going to do that well it's going to come one day at a time you know uh everything we're always evolving and changing we're not the same people from five years ago we're not the same people from one year ago things change and move on so we gotta move on with it we have to make a choice and that's being positive about what's coming I don't know how tomorrow is going to be, but I'm hoping that tomorrow I wake up and move on and do what I'm supposed to do. One day at a time. We got to 
always, always look into the positive. I know that there's going to be a lot of negativity, negativity, and there's already some. So what we need to do sometimes is stay away. You know what? Let me go this way or let me do something else. So we need to have that within us. So I hope I answered the question. I heard part of it, but it was, I think that's what we were going to do. What, you know, what, what are we going to do when this is over? Well, we want to be alive and healthy. Thank you, Dr. Alaniz. Anything else to add to that, Ms. Compia? I think that, well, part of the question that I heard was um, the anxiety that comes up when, say, we go to the grocery store and we see everyone wearing a mask. Uh, did I get that part? So, yeah, and, and uh, of course, you know, we, we're not accustomed to seeing people wearing masks and we associate people wearing masks um, with something completely out of the ordinary and it's difficult for us when say I go to the grocery store and I have my uh, personal face mask on I'm not seeing myself I'm seeing the outside I'm, I'm looking at everyone else and so it's easy to kind of panic and and then I have to I have to react and I have to think oh well I'm wearing my own as well and the purpose for that and then we have to stop and think, okay, I'm wearing my mask, it's keeping me safe. They're wearing, every person is wearing their mask. It's important, and I know I, I go back to um, explaining to children, but it's very important because even the way we react, um, and it's very common, I, I know that at the, at the beginning, at the onset, the first outing that I had, and I went out and saw people wearing masks, and I just, oh my goodness. Um, but we have to understand that this is a, a way to prevent the spread, to keep our community safe. And it's important, especially when, um, when children see this and, and children have these kinds of reactions and they may not ask, why is that person wearing a mask or why? But we have to just assure them in a casual kind of way and say, oh, we are, we're all wearing a mask because we need to stay safe. And even, of course, we're having our children wear them and things like, you know, all of that. But yeah, the stigma is out there. And the, fun, the, the strange thing about it all is that we're wearing our mask as well, but we're seeing everyone else. So we kind of like take that into account and say, oh, you know, everyone's wearing a mask, but that's a good thing. So changing our thinking and putting it into perspective, into the positive, that's nowadays we have to stop and think that's a great thing that everybody's wearing a mask because the spread is prevented or limited or hopefully minimized and extinguished. We're, we're hoping and praying for that. So, yeah. Another way too is to minimize the uh, in any of these type of, of situations for example let's, let's start with that protective covering how do we make that listen less intimidating that actually wearing a mask is there a way to make it less intimidating to actually wear a mask for example you and your child could actually create your own mask and that puts them in a position to start becoming less tense or less fearful of the actual action of, of putting on a mask. And in fact, if you go around town now, you see many people that have created their own custom masks. And it became almost, hey, now it's great to be wearing their own mask. Case in point, this gives me the opportunity, by the way, to showcase my, uh, my mask as a custom made and Voila, it has the city logo of Rio Grande City. Nice. So again, is how do you custom make something that's more appropriate to you? And you can find different creative ways, but this in itself, it makes it less intimidating, Correct. especially for children. So again, it's minimize, somehow find a way to lessen that, that intimidation factor of simple of some of a simple action of wearing a mask and those are creative ways and i'm sure there are many but find a creative way to make that situation less intimidating 
and many a times there are wonderful ways to do it. And one of which, as I was mentioning, is, is work with your child to, to make their own mask uh, or find some other creative custom way of, of making that. Mr. Correct. Sarah, you wish to add to that? And I'm glad you gave me the opportunity to showcase my mask. <laughs> I want to showcase mine too. Go ahead. <laughs> one of my <laughs> colleagues, Ms. Seva Garza, one of our high school counselors made one for me and it's two sides. And also nice. my mother-in-law, Oralia Lanis made some for me and my kids and my husband. So yeah, and, and it has to do with how we present it out there, how we do it, you know, Again, like Ms. Elma Compian said, you know, it has to do with us as parents. It begins with us, you know, how I show it to my kids, how I present it. I can say, you know what, uh, this is going to happen. We're not going to do this. But then I can say, you know what, let's do this. And I'm going to bring it up and I, and I know it's out there. I'm going to bring it up a little bit because I think it's important. I have a senior. I have a senior and Me said, too. Elma too. I have a, a college student. She was supposed to or she's yeah she was supposed to graduate may 8th they move her graduation and uh, i have my senior and my eighth grader everybody graduating and all and i say you know what mamas we are blessed because we're healthy and we're alive we'll take it a day at a time if i start saying oh my gosh your trip oh my gosh this you know and i know it's out there oh my god your graduation well you know what i believe so very much god is in control correct and i i have that in my mind i keep it in my mind and that's where I'm at. So uh, hopefully, you know, uh, uh, we can have peace in amongst all of this that is happening to us. But we have a lot to do with how our children see what's coming, what's out there. Just Correct. something I want Thank to say. Thank you, Dr. Alanis. I agree. Saravia, anything else you wish to add to that, Mr. Saravia? Yeah, well, very well said by the three of you. And I very well said by the three of you. And I think part of the question was also the anxiety that comes with going back to normal once they're allowed to go to different places. And I think it's important to remind ourselves that um, uh, we're gonna be led by government officials and, and medical professionals that will tell us when they think it's safe uh, to, to go back to uh, our normal life. And I'm sure they're gonna do it in steps. Uh, they're not gonna open it up for a concert for a massive crowd at the very <laughs> beginning. It's probably gonna be little by little maybe uh, regional, I'm sure it's gonna open uh, at different points for different cities or states. And uh, it's important for us to be guided by the professionals and, and remind ourselves that uh, they're doing it when they feel it's safer. And, and the more we are out there, then the less fear we're gonna have, like any fear or pho phobia itself, uh, exposure, right, is the best uh, way to uh, overcome it. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Saravia. Thank you, Dr. Alaniz, and thank you, Ms. Compian. Thank you so much for sharing your thank expertise, you so your knowledge this, this uh, afternoon, this evening. Thank you so much. It, uh, it is a great uh, endeavor that you take on to share this information and how it is that we can help our community manage and cope with these uh, emotional feelings that were that uh, this pandemic has certainly brought our, our community and I can't say enough but but thank you um, for doing this and thank you to the community that that heard this message thank you for following the orders thank you for putting on the facial coverings thank you for for being there and supporting one another during this pandemic and uh, simply thank you to, to all the individuals, uh, everyone who has done their part and all of us have done, have done our part to deal with this pandemic, whether it's the first responders, the educators, the, the medical professionals, again, the first responders and uh, the workers that are essential workers that are out there day in, day out, and uh, all of us in, in general, the truck drivers that are out there, uh, from farm workers to, to um, workers at HEB and Walmart and all the convenience stores. And, and it's, it's incredible to see and witness firsthand the generosity 
of many individuals who during this time of need have come to, to the aid of others. Uh, we've had individuals, for example, donate masks to the city or donate disinfectant or the food drives that we've had and things of that nature. And, and volunteers like yourselves that are volunteering your time and effort here with us today to share in your knowledge and expertise and to many others out there that are also volunteering their time uh, a safe way. Uh, thank you so much to our community for, for coming together during this pandemic and to finding a way to cope and to get through this. Once again, thank you very much to my colleagues. Thank you to the community. And uh, for any other questions, please forward them to the city and to our Facebook page, and we will answer those questions and put all this information on our webpage and, and uh, access channel as well and other resources. Once again, thank you to everyone. Have a good night and God, bl God bless all of us. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.